right, what's up you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music, and I'm gonna give you my top tips for getting those pesky bar chords down. Uh, you know, I have a lot of experience teaching even before YouTube, and so I'm gonna give you everything I got to try and help you. And if you need even more than that, I have an entire course on bar chords, uh, and it's totally free at martymusic.com. So I'm gonna leave a link in the first comment down there. Like I said, completely free course on bar chords, and I'm gonna give you some helpful tips right now. So let's zoom in and do it. All right, I think the most important thing with overcoming the difficulty of bar chords is to not avoid them, right? So in other words, you're playing a D, you get to a B minor, and you're like, oh man, it just sounds so bad, I'm not gonna practice that or play that song. Whereas what you should do is you should play it bad because you have to play it bad for for it to eventually become a little less bad, and then you gotta play it a little more where it's good every once in a while, et cetera, right? You have to work through it. You don't just take a bar chord and on the first time have it be clean. The muscle memory and the strength in the hands need to develop, and so you have to do it by practicing where it just, it just has to sound crappy for a while, and then eventually it gets better and better. So that's really number one. Don't avoid it. Go for it. So let me talk about, you know, a progression you would see a lot with one bar chord. You'd have a D and an A and then a B minor and then a G. Classic pop style chords. just making random progressions up with the chords D, A, G, and then a B minor in there. And by the way, you could mess with that, those chords or related in a way where you can make up any progression in any order with those chords and it will sound good. Uh, I'm gonna do it where D is the first chord, A is the second chord, and B minor is the third chord. So with the bar, classic bar chord, First, I've got my left hand, right? So you wanna take that elbow and of your left hand, your fingering hand, and push it up against your rib cage. Now look at my fingers here. A lot of beginner guitar players, their fingers are more comfortable kind of in a uh, diagonal, whereas we want our fingers to be more parallel with the frets. And taking that elbow and moving it in, you see, look at my pinky, it immediately puts my hand in a better position. So that's just something to check. It's gonna be, you know, easy to see. So if you're not playing a bar chord well, take a look and see if that's part of the, part of the issue. Now, another thing I like to do is deconstruct the bar chord, almost like a brain game or brain exercise to to get our muscle memory going as, as quickly and efficiently as possible. Let's not waste you know, any more time than we need to for the chord to sound crappy, right? And then for it to eventually sound cleaner and cleaner. So let's take a look at this B minor chord. Basically what, what you're doing is you're taking an A minor and you're moving it up a whole step. But if you look at the A minor, you've got the open A string as part of it. And then you've also got the open high E, so when I move it up a whole step, it's actually a really cool chord. But it's not B minor. We have to create a starting point like this nut on the guitar normally is, but now we have to do it with our finger. You would see, you know, a lot of players use a capo. And it's a great way to avoid bar chords, actually, and playing easy songs with a capo and picking keys where you don't have to play a bar chord. But so that's, that's officially a B minor there, but now we want to do it without a capo and still get that chord. Oops, that sounded bad. Uh, here, I'll put that down there. So one thing is a lot of pressure on that bar going across. We're not worried about the E string, so I'm gonna take my index finger and I'm gonna 
bar it across. And so our first tip is elbow against the rib cage. Next, with the finger that's doing the barring, this part of your fing finger, the, the flat part, is the most spongy. But the side of the finger along here is harder, right? This is uh, softer. That is much more firm. So we want to be using that part of our index finger. So not flat across, and look at my elbow, right? Boom, elbow goes there. It's already forcing my finger to get in a better position. So you don't want to think the flat part of your index finger. You want to think of the side, the side. And you can literally watch my elbow move into my rib cage as I roll my finger to the side like that. So something to practice without worrying about getting a bar chord shape in there is just, Yeah, see if you can squeeze it together and get it get the strings to ring out. You're not going to have to do it for all the strings because the rest of our fingers are going to form the shape. Um, so you've got the bar, elbow, and then the shape. And so it looks exactly like an A minor chord, but I'm using my middle finger, ring, and pinky to do it. Okay, so then take the chord, put it down, and then go through each string and see what's not ringing out. Okay, they're all ringing out for me. But when you get to one, see that's not ringing out because you're a beginner and you're trying to get through this. That's hopefully why you're watching the video. Take a look at what's not ringing out well and then look over here and just try and make the adjustments to get it to, to ring out better. All right, so let's recap. We've got elbow against the rib cage, which forces my hand into a better position, which are more parallel with the frets. I wanna use the side of my index finger, which doing that helps to do. Then I also study that it's, a bar chord is like an index finger with a capo and then another classic chord shape. So we're using the A minor chord shape right there okay so then the next the next tip for the muscle memory is as you're practicing the chord alternate we want to add variation into the practice routine so when you're practicing the bar chord index finger down then form the shape and play it and study what's not ringing out next time and this is important do the chord shape first then put the bar down so, then you wanna give it a try where the whole chord goes down. So, once again, the bar, then the shape, and we're just working, this is muscle memory work. So bar, then the shape, good. Then shape, chord shape, then the bar. And then third, take the chord, and you gotta spray some of that classic free spray on it. And then keep the shape, and take your hand off trying to keep the shape, and then put it back on, and look and see whatever, whatever corrections you need to make to put it back, back on there. And that will help that muscle memory come along a lot faster. All right, so you've got elbow, parallel to the frets, side of your index finger, practice with the bar first, then the shape, then the shape first, then the bar, then the whole thing together, free spray, take it off, put it back on, and keep repeating that, and then try and add it into progressions, and take your time with it, because that's what practicing is. You're not... You know, if you're practicing learning a song, then you're going through the techniques and working them out, the fundamentals of it, as opposed to playing the song, which is what you do after you practice. Now, another thing about the strength of the hand is you can just a little bit feel pulling back. And that adds, 
you know, if I'm pulling back this way, I'm still holding it firmly here, but then just feel that little bit of feeling like I'm pulling the neck back helps that extra strength. Now, another thing is if, for instance, when you're doing a bar chord, like an E minor looking bar chord shape, which a classic way you might find that is like with an E major in there. All the same practice techniques work, but something cool that's unique to the E minor shape is that your middle finger is free and you can reinforce that bar by doing that together to help press down and relieve some of the, 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 the strength you need of just your index finger. All right, so work on that. Remember, it's gotta sound crappy first. If you avoid it, you'll never get better at it. It's really, really important. It sounds so simple, but I've seen it where people avoid it. So don't do that. And then also, it's completely free in the link in the first comment down there, a, a free, you know, it, it's at least an hour to two hours long, a, a course on bar chords. Um, so it's going to talk about the fundamentals I talked about in this video, but it's going to walk you through all the different shapes practice uh, routines and progressions, and it's a totally free course at martymusic.com. So I appreciate you checking that out, and I, I know it will help you. Uh, so, yeah. All right, hope you guys enjoyed uh, the lesson, and I hope it helped. Uh, thank you again for supporting Marty Music, and if you wanna get more into the bar chords, like I, like I said, to remind you, I have a completely free course on bar chords, and I left the link down there in the first comment so check that out if you want to get better at bar chords thanks again for supporting marty music and i hope to see you again real soon see you later